Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is Forbes contributor Caroline Reed. Caroline, thank you for coming on. It's great to, to be on, but thank you very much, Brittany, for having me. I'm excited to talk to you about this. I know you wrote for Forbes that you are a Disney expert. You've stayed at the resort for more than a year over the past 20 years. So I'm excited to get your insight on this. And board members of the special district that oversees Walt Disney World, who were appointed by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, sued Disney in state court on Monday. And this comes less than a week after Disney sued DeSantis and the board. So can you get us up to to speed where we are in the fight against Ron DeSantis versus Disney. Yeah, I mean, this is completely unprecedented in the history of Walt Disney World. Um, for years, Disney and the government of Florida always had a very good relationship. Uh, what happened when Walt Disney World was set up is they were given special privileges to um, control their own um, local uh, governance uh, without um, interference from um, other elected bodies. Uh, they could do their own inspections. They had control over planning permission. Um, what happened um, last year is um, the beginning of this year is uh, with the so-called don't say gay bill coming in in Florida um disney originally um were neutral on that then under pressure from their staff um disney then switched and came out against it um ron DeSantis wasn't very happy about that and um uh, he um decided to uh withdraw the special privileges that disney had had to have basically its own little kingdom in the middle of florida um now things have got particularly nasty between them. Um, Ron DeSantis threatened to build uh, something uh, uh, to, to he to, he took control of the um, the local uh, Disney's own local governing body, and he threatened to uh, give planning permission for all variety of things, from a rival amusement park to a prison on the land adjacent to Walt Disney World. Um, Disney sued him um, for um, attacking their freedom of speech. And now um, it looks like he's counter suing. So um, it's been a busy few last few weeks um, in Florida for Disney. And who is the winner in this fight when you're just looking at Governor Ron DeSantis and Disney? Because both are really entrenched in this battle that it seems like it's a losing side for both. And uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis did emerge as a face of the GOP after the midterms in November. But now, and he a potential presidential candidate, I know he didn't announce his run yet, but even people that are in the GOP are coming out against him for this. Yeah, I, I mean, from a UK point of view, I'm obviously not an expert in American politics, but um, to me, it, it looks like DeSantis is actually making big gains for this. I, I think the Republican voters um, are happy with any kind of anti-woke stance. Um, I, I think uh, that he, he's, he's getting a lot of publicity for this, which is obviously something that you need um, if you're run, uh, potentially running for president. Uh, I mean, for, for example, Ron DeSantis is someone who has ha hardly ever been covered in, in UK newspapers before. And suddenly you have big story with Disney and uh, he, he's getting press all over the world. It's uh, I mean, in, in, ter in terms of raising his profile, uh, I, I, I can't see that he's, he's going to stop doing this because um, it, it, it's, it's just giving him so much the publicity that he needs to run for president. That's really interesting, your point of this is raising his international profile because the contenders already in the race. They know that in in the presidential race, the GOP version at least, or the GOP side at least, Donald Trump is number one and then polling behind him is Ron DeSantis. So obviously everyone in the GOP lane has been chomping at the bit to come at him, calling him not a conservative for his actions against Disney. But you in your piece for Forbes said there is one true winner of of this fight that could emerge, and it's the visitors of Disney World. Can you explain why? Yes. Uh, well, I mean, you have to bear in mind that uh, 
DeSantis is first to, his job is to protect Florida, protect Florida's industries, uh, protect taxes, etc. Disney is actually Florida's biggest taxpayer. So uh, whatever he's saying, whatever postures he makes, whatever legal actions, he, he doesn't want to go too far and entirely destroy uh, Walt Disney World's presence in Florida because uh, that would be a lot of money lost to him as well as to Disney. Um, so I, I, th I think that these threats of jails, etc., I, th I think it's. It, I think it is probably going too far. It's. A, it's probably a lot of posturing. Uh, I mean, for example, I mean th there are jails near uh, uh, near Anaheim um, in uh, the Disneyland Park in Anaheim, for example. No, no one even knows about that. Uh, uh, but I, I think I think the publicity from building a jail ne next to Disney World in this kind of context. I, I think w would uh, put people off because there'd be so much tension on it. Um, but there are things that he could he can do which could increase visitor numbers while hitting Disney's share of the market. For example, um, anyone who's ever been to Disney World knows that uh, it, it's very insular. It's very difficult to get to outside shopping centers or um, restaurants unless you have a car. And even if you have a car, you may not want to drive, may not want to go on the many toll roads that they have around there. Um, so it's it's always much more convenient to stay on site at Walt Disney World. It's, uh, I think, 43 square miles. It's huge. Um, so um, Disney's always had this lockout. But uh, the problem with that is that the prices are expensive and they're getting even more expensive. Prices have just been skyrocketing at the Disney theme parks over the last few years. Um, uh, uh, in terms of tickets, food, hotels, everything. Uh, so, um, but there's always been a situation where um, uh, where it, it's not just for food. If you if you want to buy deodorant, if you want to buy toothpaste, you have to go to the Disney hotel shops, and they they are ridiculous. The the prices for just normal toiletries are probably three or four times what you would pay in a supermarket. Um, so. Um, so what one of the ways out that Ron DeSantis might consider looking at would be to build, say, a big shopping mall as close to Walt Disney World as the powers that he's now got would allow him to. Um, Dis uh, Disney's, uh, Disney's powers to object are now reduced. And all, uh, and this would be something that would be a big, big benefit, for uh, particularly for families staying there, uh, but for anyone who, who is visiting, if, if they could access a big supermarket, a Walmart or something, uh, access um, just clothing shops where he, if, if they forget their swimsuit, they can get a swimsuit for, say, 10 or $15 rather than spending 30 or $40 like you would at, at one of the Disney water parks. So it, it, this is something that would be a big boost for visitors without actually reducing the visitor numbers, which is uh, is something um, something that, say, a prison would do. And something like, a, I mean, people have said he could build an amusement park, but uh, part of the problem with the amusement park is that people who visit there are also likely to visit Disney. So again, it's increasing Disney's revenues. But if he wants to hit Disney, without hurting Florida, I think something like a mega mall would really be the way forward. In your piece, you pointed out an interesting fact that a burger in the park is three times the price of a burger at McDonald's. I mean, it's getting to the point where this is just really unattainable for the average American to go on a vacation there. So essentially, let's say that there is a mall built right next to Disney. Would that force Disney's hand to be more competitive when it comes to pricing? I think they would have to be because um, uh, they would have to find the balance because the moment their um, attendance area, they have an area, for example, called Disney Springs, which is full of shops and restaurants. So the moment that uh, it is, it's not ticketed access, so anyone can go there. Uh, so the moment that uh, visitor numbers at Disney Springs started to drop, they would have to reduce their prices to compete with a new shopping area. And the the, the prices are as as you said. I think I think um, the um, 
lower end burger place at Disney Springs is a uh, establishment called Deluxe Burger. The burgers there um, are ten ninety nine dollars um, without uh, 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 no fries, no drink. Um, McDonald's burger, obviously, you can get for a third of that. And the nearest McDonald's is way uh, off site, just on the edge of Walt Disney World. Um, it's not easy to access. Uh, I went there once and they'd run out of burgers, so it, it's a bit of a bit of an odd McDonald's. But um, it, it, it's certainly not easy to access. It's not even easy to find. So it, it's it. it the, the idea that people could, uh, visitors to Disney would have an option, particularly if they're a big family, say three or four kids, to go somewhere where it, they don't have to spend so much money. Well, I, I, th- I think that would be a big boost for guests. As you pointed out, Disney World in Florida is pretty isolated in its area, and that's not really the case in Anaheim for Disneyland. Can you explain the difference there and what's the competition back in California? Yes, I mean, in, in, Cal- in California, um, when you come out of um, the main gates in Anaheim, there's a McDonald's directly opposite. There's an IHOP. Um, there, are, um, there are some small motel-type hotels. There's one, for example, called the, the, uh, called the Alpine Hotel, which, again, is about a third of the price of the Disney hotels. Um, there's uh, one in the shape of a castle but these are these are not disney level theming these are very like kitsch type themed motels um uh, for example if you need any toiletries you can easily um, walk to a walgreens or something so um it, it it's it's a very different picture there and i i, th- I think you you find uh, for example there are only three hotels on site in anaheim um three disney hotels because people have got so many other options that they can just reach within walking distance. Um, so it, it, it is a case that uh, it, it, can, it, it can give people a wider variety of choice that isn't Disney. And have these plethora of options infringed on Disneyland's business? Um, I, I would say so. I mean, for, for example, um, they had the equivalent of the Disney Springs area, their downtown Disney area. And um, that um, has always been a little bit smaller than Disney Springs, but just recently they closed uh, they closed part of it for renovations, uh, which has led to them, they've only now got a very small number of restaurants there. So um, it, it's, it's not really an essential part of the Disney package in Anaheim they've not been able to build it up um, as a big, big destination the way that Disney has in Orlando. So Disney sued DeSantis, DeSantis sued Disney. Right now it seems like they're really entrenched and there's not a solution in sight. What do you see as the logical outcome here? Well, I mean, it it all depends on what everyone wants to achieve. I'm I'm sure that DeSantis would like to keep this running as long as possible. It keeps him in the news. Um, D- Disney, of course, uh, um, want to what, will want to find some kind of solution. That they don't want to be distracted by this, and they don't want DeSantis coming in and saying, "No, you can't do that. You can't do this," and so on. Um, I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't know which way it will go, but I, 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 I suspect that possibly at some stage we could see some kind of solution where. Um, uh, that that uh, gives uh, gives Disney a bit of a uh, bit of their control back. It enshrines that in the local laws, while making it look like DeSantis has saved the day, has uh, brought new business into Florida. I, I mean that that would be a that would be a, a good solution for everyone. I think well, whether they'll actually sit down and, and come to that come to that conclusion or whether they'll continue fighting, uh, I think I think we have to see. Caroline, I like your perspective where the visitors could end up being the winner in all of this. Caroline Reed, thank you so much. Thank you very much.